Welcome to Lessons from the Playroom. In this podcast, Lisa Dion will help you explore the little things that make a big difference in play therapy. Lisa is the founder and CEO of the Play Therapy Institute of Colorado and the creator of Synergetic Play Therapy. You know, sometimes therapists get all caught up trying to study big theories and mastering techniques to help children like me. But sometimes it's the little things we show you along the way that make the biggest difference. Join Lisa as she teaches you some of the little lessons that children are trying to communicate to you so that you can help us in the best ways possible. And on behalf of all the kids you work with, thanks for listening and believing in us. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the latest episode from the Lessons from the Playroom podcast and webinar series. We are at episode number 36, where we are going to explore the use of a bot bag, sometimes called a punching bag, in the play therapy process. Let's just go ahead and jump in and get started. So the use of a bot bag is a pretty controversial topic in the play therapy field uh, it really falls right in line with the discussion around what to do when aggression enters the room should we um, allow it should we stop it you know what do we do there's a lot of concern about bringing in something like a bot bag or a punching bag and the concern is that if we do so we're going to be somehow promoting aggression or increasing it in some way or really advocating for that. So in the discussion today, I want to talk about bot bags as more of a versatile type of a tool to have in the playroom. I want to speak to both sides of the controversy so that you can make a decision about whether or not it's something that really feels like something you want to have in your room or not. There really isn't a a right or a wrong way to do it um, or to have it or to not have it. It's just one of those topics that I think we should think about because there may be times when it's helpful and there may be times when it's not so helpful. So let's let's explore the, the whole range. So as I mentioned, this falls right in line with the discussion around what to do with aggression in the playroom at all. There are some that land in the camp of not okay for the aggression to come into the room. When aggression comes into the room, we need to work with the child right away to help them understand that you know it's not okay to express the aggression, that they need to calm down, that we really need to be working more at teaching them some of the social skills around the aggressive urges, those types of things. And then there's other individuals that fall in the camp of the playroom is the perfect place for aggression to show up and it absolutely needs to because it can be part of what the child is trying to work through related to their dysregulated states of their nervous system or a traumatic event or something like that. And then I think there is like everything in in between. When I really look at this topic around the use of the bot bag, for me, what I start to think about has more to do with not so much is having a bot bag a good or a bad thing in the playroom, more around what's the purpose of it and how is it being used. For me, it tends to shed a bit more light on being able to answer that, answer the question. And so it doesn't matter if we're talking about a bot bag or a sword fight or being handcuffed in the play or whatever. For me, the question that we need to be looking at is, is it therapeutic? Are we working with the child in such a way while they're engaged in the play that happens to have aggression attached to it? And are we doing it in a way that allows for integration to occur and allows for the child to have a therapeutic experience, which begins to separate it out a bit from catharsis. Now, catharsis Um, For those of you that aren't familiar with the history of catharsis, catharsis came, was an idea that came about really around this idea of um, if we were to begin to act out or role play and allow these 
quote unquote, negative feelings inside to come out, so to cathart in some way, that then we would feel better. And there are many different um, schools of thought that have uh, latched on to some of this. And so, for example, this idea that we sometimes hear about, you know, we're so mad, you know, get the mad out. So punch the pillow, you know, scream it out, hit it out, that kind of thing. I'm not saying there's a right or wrong with that. I am a trained Gestalt therapist, and one of the things that we have learned in our Gestalt training is how to use something called a bataka, which looks a bit like a sword, and there's a very specific way that you use the bataka to hit a pillow that actually allows for the, the aggressive energy to move through the system, and there very much can be a cathartic quality to it. But even within that, there's still the question of what makes it therapeutic and what I'm going to say, whether it's in something like um, a gestalt or if you are working with your child client and it's like, let's just, you know, get it out, like color it out or, you know, throw the ball at the whatever um, or the use of the bot bag. For me, what we're really having to talk about here is connection. Is the child connected to themselves while they're engaged in this cathartic process. If they're not, to me that's where that's where things can get a little dicey because it's it's not necessarily integrating. It can be a release, it can create some relief in the nervous system, but it's not necessarily an, an integrative force. The integrative force requires a level of mindfulness and requires a level of connection. So when we take that information and we translate that over to the bot bag, what we're really talking about is when the child is using the bot bag, how can we support the child in engaging in the play with the bot bag in a way where they are connected to themselves, where they are beginning to have a heightened experience of mindful awareness of what's happening in their own bodies? Are they learning about themselves and the aggressive um, urges that are happening inside of them. And so when we keep that in mind, that can help us begin to think about how might we respond? What might we do if the bot bag were to come into the room? So again, as I mentioned, some people will say, don't have it in the room. That's not the place for it because you're promoting aggression. Others will say it's actually a very useful toy in the playroom because the child can work through their aggressive urges and can begin to learn about this aspect of themselves and this aspect of their nervous system state. So if you're going to have it in the room, the first thing that I will say is to expand your thinking that the bat bag is only used for aggression. It's not. I've seen children definitely use a bot bag or a punching bag for something like aggression. So for example, they pretend that it is somebody or represents a situation and they hit it or they kick it or something like that. But I've also um, seen children use it in a completely opposite way, which actually has to do with support and as a way to regulate. So for example, I've seen children just lay on top of it and rock on it and roll on it. I've seen kids, you know, lay on the ground and ask me to, you know, roll it over their legs for some proprioceptive input into their legs to regulate them. Nothing aggressive at all. Very much an integrative um, experience. So when we're looking at this, then really to look at, don't assume that you know what they're using it for and don't make an assumption about the use of it. The child, just like any other toy in the playroom, will have it become whatever they want it to be. I've seen the bot bag, I'm actually recalling right now, a session that I was doing with a 10-year-old girl and the mother was in the room and she grabbed the bot bag and the bot bag was dad. And in the play, we were together, we were having a picnic. And so we're having a picnic and there's dad represented by the bot bag and we're all having a picnic together. She just needed something to represent dad to complete the play experience. So again, the child will take the bot bag and will have it become whatever the child needs it, needs it to become. 
So don't assume that you know who or what the child wants the bot bag to represent. It's really not important for you to know. The child knows. What's more important is that we keep in mind the energy that's arising as a result of how the child is interacting with the bot bag. If it's pretty obvious that the bot bag is being used to represent a person, it's also not important that you know the intended gender of the bot bag. And if the child has not made it really clear, sometimes it's best just to refer to the bot bag as it rather than he or she, unless it's really obvious. And then I'll also put a word of caution in here too. Children change gender in the, in the playroom to protect identity, to protect all kinds of things. So that even if the child is saying that the bot bag is a male, it may not be a male at all in real life. And so don't also make the assumption that the gender is correlated specifically. When we do that, we can begin to make stories about, oh, that, was, that must be dad, or that must be mom, or that must be the brother. It's not important for you to know. What's important is for you to feel the experience of it to help them facilitate the process. And then sometimes it's just really obvious um, who or what the situation is. So when we're making reflections, we really want to make reflections that address the underlying feelings that the child's attempting to project onto the bot bag. So I'll say that again. We want to address the underlying feelings. So for example, if the child is picking up the bot bag and the child starts to throw it around the room, turning it upside down, making it spin quickly, you know, and you're having to get out of the way to protect yourself, what you're really looking at is what's the feeling of that? What's the felt What's the felt sense underneath that? So what I want to do is outline for you some examples of some different types of responses you might make so that you can get a sense that you really can make reflections from multiple, I'm going to call them angles, but it's really just different types of reflections to help the child become aware of what they're doing and to help this become a more in, uh, therapeutic experience. So one of them is to actually voice the bot bag itself. Uh, this is similar to voicing the toy where we become the toy. The thing that I would say here is to make sure that what you're saying makes sense. I have an, an earlier episode in this um, podcast series where I talk about how to make observational statements with the brain in mind. You might want to refer back to that one for a little bit more on making statements that, that make sense to the brain. And, and one of the pieces that I talk about in there is that when we're, when we're voicing the toy or voicing the bot bag, it's when we just say, so if you can imagine this, you are, uh, the child has the, the bot bag and they're picking it up and they're throwing it around, turning it upside down and you're observing it and you're saying things like, oh, I'm so dizzy, um, you know, I'm spinning out of control, my world is upside down, there's a high probability that the child is going to stop the play and look at you and go, you're just fine. What do you, like, what are you doing? What are you saying? Because it doesn't make sense because you're not the one that's being turned upside down and spun around. The bot bag is. But what you could say that would make a lot of sense and be very congruent is if I were it, right? Or if I were him or her, if you actually knew the gender, I'd be thinking or I'd be feeling, I'm spinning out of control. My world is upside down. So that piece of if I were, the child doesn't have to stop for a minute to think about what you just said and try to figure out where, what angle you were coming from, the child can just continue to stay in their process. So that's the first one is to voice the bot bag. Another one is to just voice what it would be like to be the observer because the child is recreating the play in front of you for you to watch it. They want you to know what it feels like to be the observer. So you might say something like, oh, I feel nervous watching this. You know, I, I'm feeling swirlies in my stomach. I don't know how to respond. I don't know if I should, you know, protect you or protect it. Whatever is congruent um, in the play 
to actually name that and then I would follow it up with adding in some regulation like take a deep breath or something like that just to help ground a little bit of the intensity. The next one is voicing your observation of the bot bag itself. So you might say something about the bot bag. So something like, its world is turned upside down. It has no control. And you'll hear in my statements here that I'm speaking to the metaphor of what the child is actually doing with the bot bag. So again, voice the bot bag. What is it like to be the observer watching this take place? Voice your observation of the bot bag itself. And then the last one is voice your observation of what you think the child's intent, um, interaction with the bot bag is about. So almost like the child's intention in the interaction. So you might say something like, you want it to know what it feels like to have everything upside down and have no control. So again, you want it to know what it feels like to have everything upside down and have no control. I can't tell you how many times I have made this last statement with children and they look at me and they go, yeah, I just want him to know. Or it's a beautiful opening where then they go, yeah, I got hurt. I didn't like how I got hurt. Or I just want them to feel like they're disappearing. And it's this amazing opening where they then start to share their process um, as well. And then, and then within that, it's not catharsis anymore because they're becoming aware of why they're doing what they're doing. And then when you add in a little bit of regulation with the breath of like, yeah, that really, you did not like that. And you really want them to know or want it to know that you did not like whatever it was. Okay, let's breathe. And now you're bringing in that integrative force so the child's not just sitting there just wailing on a bot bag or punching the bot bag. The biggest piece around the objection to having the bot bag, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this podcast, is the concern that somehow the aggression is going to be promoted or reinforced. And so as much as possible, avoid reflections that, that actually encourage the aggression. So you'll notice in all the examples that I just gave, I didn't say things like, get him, you're so strong, show him how mad you are, hit him again. Those don't actually get to the felt sense underneath. It's not about the child hitting the bot bag. It's what the child is attempting to express. It's the feelings connected to it. So when we just make statements like, you're so strong, get him, hit him again, we're, we're not actually getting into the therapeutic part of the experience. We really are just promoting aggression and promoting catharsis potentially in those moments. I mentioned that sometimes the child will use the bot bag in a way that has nothing to do with aggression. I mentioned support, for example. Then we can also provide reflections that actually enhance their awareness of what they're doing around this too. So for example, if, um, if a child, let's say, has been running around the room, maybe in a really like anxious or frantic way, maybe going from toy to toy, and then maybe finds the bot bag and just lies on top of it. And maybe as they're lying on top of it, they're really struggling. He's really struggling to, to gain his balance. You might then say some examples. So again, going back to voice your observation of the bot bag. Um, you know, it keeps moving. It's hard for it to keep steady and support you. Actually speaking to the bot bag itself, describing the bot bag. You may voice your observation, again, of the child's interaction with the bot bag, some of the intention. You know, you're trying so hard to make it stop moving so that you can relax on top. It's hard to find a way to relax when things just keep moving, right? It's hard to find that steadiness inside when things just keep moving and you're trying so hard. And then what, as they try it, you can, again, really reinforce that and reinforce the regulation around it. Wow, you did it. I noticed, I noticed you just got steady. I noticed you just took a really deep breath. Right? I'm noticing that as you're lying there, right, your system is starting to relax a little bit. 
right? I'm noticing that things are starting to slow down a bit. And then the last piece that I will say here is that children will amp the play until the therapist embodies and names the intensity. I've spoken to this many times throughout the different podcast um, series. So it's really important that you are authentic and you're congruent in your responses. The child, I've seen this many times where the child will actually amp the aggressive experience in the room. They'll amp the aggression. They'll amp the aggressive behavior with the bot bag simply because the therapist just isn't embodying the intensity. They're not naming whatever it may be. They're not naming the, 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 I guess it is just the, the intensity of the play. Um, and they're not working at regulating the intensity in the room either. So just as a reminder, it's really important that we show up and that we're really in it with them and we become the external regulator in the intensity, even when it's through the experience of, um, of a bot bag. You know, your ability to stay present, your ability to stay connected to yourself and to your child is what begins to make this a very healing experience. The child, you may be the first person that's able to just stay in the intensity with them without trying to control it, shut it down, stop it, make it go away. And you're just breathing and you're hanging in there and you're naming these different types of reflections so the child can also begin to gain an awareness of what's going on in their system. And this is what begins to make this kind of play more therapeutic. It helps ground the child so that the child then doesn't have to take the play and continue it outside of the session because it's been integrating along the way. The last piece that I'll leave you with is an encouragement to go back and listen to episode number five. In that episode, I talk about when and why to set boundaries in the playroom. Whenever we're talking about aggression, we're talking about intensity, it is important to talk about boundaries. Boundaries are incredibly important. And how we do them, why we do them, when we do them is equally as important. We can either do it in a way that just stops the play and shuts the child's process down, or we can do it in a way where the energy keeps moving and we are able to do it without shaming the child and the child feels respected and we are able to stay within our window of tolerance so we can continue to modulate the intensity that the child is, is bringing into the session. So there you go. There's our topic for this particular episode, how to work with a bot bag or a punching bag in the room. I hope you were able to hear some, some little pieces that can support you in your work in the playroom. And as I mentioned, if, if using a bot bag is not comfortable for you, then, then don't use one. This is just to speak to if you were to use them and to speak to a bit to the controversy um, there can be a case made for if you have a child that's in the room that has really, really aggressive and intense play that tends to come at you, having something like this can be helpful just so that the intensity is directed away from you a bit so that you can, again, be able to stay present, hold the intensity, stay within your window of tolerance, and help um, regulate the child. So until next time, be well. Take really good care of yourselves. You are the most important toys in that playroom. And thank you for showing up and doing the profound work that you do on a regular basis with the children in your practice or wherever they are absolutely blessed to be able to be um, in relationship with you. Keep doing the amazing work that you're doing. And I look forward to next time.